Amen. Well, just a real short scripture today, and it's, it's found in John 8, verse 12. And it, it's interesting that, that this, follows the, it, this follows the scripture of the, the event with the woman caught in adultery and, and uh, what Jesus said there. And then he follows this with, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have light of life. He says, I am the light. I am the light. He who follows me has life. You know, and it's interesting because in that scripture he talks about that, he who follows me, but, but everything we learn about Jesus is Jesus takes no honor. Jesus takes no, he's, he's not, hey, look at me, look at me, okay? Because he continues to say, I say nothing that the Father doesn't say to me to say. I do nothing that the Father doesn't tell me to do, okay? So, so he never boasts or, or says, look at all of this stuff I'm doing. He's always talking about how all that he does is only through the Father. Okay? Perfect example. And we've talked about that in weeks past, about, about Jesus being our, our perfect example. The roadmap or GPS or whatever you want to call it. You know, he is our example. Like I said, we talked last week about the tree planted by the water. And, and another part that is needed besides the water is, is, is light. You know, plants need light to, to grow. You know, uh, our bodies need light. You know, as, as I look at this, you know, we don't, we don't think about it, but really and truly our, our, our human bodies are designed to where they need light, okay? They, they receive nourishment from light. Yes, we can overdo it. <laughs> Some of us in the, in the years past have, have spent hours and hours out in the sun and got way too much sun sometimes, but, but our bodies need light. Okay, just as the plants need light. Plants, and I want to read this because I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss, miss what, I, what I've, I've got here. It says, it says, plants need light and water to survive. Yes. You know that. I mean, we all pretty well know that. that we, okay. And you know plants are drawn to light and water have you you know it's it's interesting and and i didn't i didn't ever pay much attention to it my wife pointed it out which i had not had not gotten before is that that you know when it's when it's about to storm when it's, it's going to rain how the leaves will turn up turn over and you know i'm such an observant person i, I I, I never noticed that till she said that, and then I got watching, and it, you know, but it's it's interesting because this is what we see. We see that uh, the plants are drawn to light and water. This is called tropism, okay? Which is a tropism is a scientific name of how plants move towards the things most essential to their survival okay i want you to get that i want you to get that because we're going to start seeing a comparison here this is called tropism it's a it's a, an amazing display of god's design in nature okay yes. it's about them moving towards the things that are most essential for their survival it comes from the Greek word tropos, 
which means the turning. But it also, it goes past the turning to reaction, response, or change. Think about that for a minute. Okay. What they, what plants need to survive, God has created them to move towards that. Okay. Well, just as plants, we, God has created us to move towards what we need for our survival. Okay. And, and our human thoughts are is that it's, it's about drawing towards the foods and the waters and the things that, you know, that we, that we need, okay, which is all right. But I propose that the, the critical part is, is that not only do we need light, sunlight, you know, you think about it. Think about how you feel on days that it's bright sunshine outside or gloomy like we had this winter just kind of gloomy and and, you know I mean I don't know about y'all but I can tell a difference in my my spirit when you know when it's just gloomy all the time I I think about those I think about those as a matter of fact I had a good friend that was stationed in Alaska for 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 in the Air Force and he actually re-upped so he could say they loved it but uh I talked to him that, that, and, you know, it was interesting that they had more trouble with it being dark all the time than they did with it being the times that it was light all the time, okay? Because you could close up your windows and, and create darkness within the house, okay? But think about that. So there's, when there's dark and gloomy, we have a tendency to just kind of get de- blahs, depressions, falls. I mean, you just, just nothing's really, okay? But when the sunshine, just like today, even though it's cold outside, the bright sunshine just, just lifts your spirit. I mean, so we need that light. We need the light, okay? And we need that spiritual light. Just as plants are drawn to the the things that they need, we are drawn to that. (laughs) When a, when a, a plant, when a seed is sown and it starts to grow, a root goes down towards water, a stem goes up towards light, okay? And as that stem, as that root goes towards water, if it runs into a resistance, it moves around that. Okay? All right? Same way, the stem going up, if it runs into resistance or something that's blocking the light or something, it moves towards the light. It moves so it... So it receives the light that it needs. Okay? It was it, the, the, when, I was, when I was studying this and I was reading about this, it was interesting that, you know, that point that it said, when it runs into resistance, it moves around the resistance to, to get to the source. How many times have you in your own life run into resistance and just kind of got stopped? Just parked there. We've all done it. Just as the root, just as a plant moves around, we need to make sure that we're moving. We're moving around to receive the source, moving to to gain, get the source that we need to survive. When you start thinking about that and you start seeing these different things, you know, like there's a, uh, there's, I'm a golfer, which most of you know, 
and uh, there's there's certain trees on the golf course that you get wondering about them sometimes we've got one there's one one tree out there that has a a, a big limb that just goes straight out about this big around and goes out about this far and then turns straight up turn into the light there's a lot of trees around it's 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 striving for the, to receive that light you think about other flowers and this this particular topic was talking about how a a plant as the sun hits it on one side that the other side will increase its growth the speed of growth to to get around so it can turn towards the light I want you to try to, to visualize that in our spiritual lives. As we're, as we're drawing to the light, to the light, okay? That, that the more that we, things that get in our way, whatever it be, you know, the world we live in, shadows will shadow our, our progress and growing and, and being out in the light. Okay, those things will interfere with us. Okay, it's important that we continue to to do whatever we need to do to move to where we're where we're getting that, that source. The first place I suggest to start is in the scriptures. Amen. That's the that's the best place. Okay, and uh, now now what we're all guilty of is. <clears throat> This is this part's free. What we're all guilty of is is we go in here and pick out the things that are real comfortable to us, and we'll we'll look at those because yeah, look what God says, look what the Word says. But true growth comes from true revelation of the Word. Okay, even the parts that hurt. Okay, because one thing we want to keep in mind is that, that, that as we grow as humans in our spiritual life, just as the plants, okay, when darkness comes, they seek the light. When darkness comes, we need to be seeking the light. We need to be turning to those things that give us, that, that we can receive light from spiritual light okay uh -huh. <laughs> the uh, plants grow they breathe they need water they need light they need you know and God has created all of that. You know, we could go back as you know, we can go back to the to Genesis and, and read through how God created, as we did last week. God spoke and there was light, you know. Then he goes on and he he separates the, the water and the earth. He just he does it all. He, he he creates the plants and the herbs and the trees and all that and, and gets all of this set and then creates us. Because he's prepared for us what we need Amen. for survival. Yes. He is there for us for our survival for our spiritual survival, for our spiritual survivor. He is, he is our source. He is our light. He is the way. Everything, everything, everything we need starts right back here. Actually, as we've learned through some Bible studies, it's even before then. Just like my favorite scripture in Jeremiah 
1, 5, before he formed me in my mother's womb, he knew me. He sanctified me. He laid it out. His plan was already out there for me, even before I was a twinkle in my mom and dad's eye. God had a purpose for my life. God has a purpose for your life. How that purpose plays out is all up to us. How we're seeking the light. If we're if we're seeking the light and you know and in my own life I could I could tell story after story of of seeking the light and 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 running into a dark place in my life and, and stopping and just parking there, sometimes for, sometimes for days, sometimes for years. There was times that I just stopped for years. But you know what? The most precious part is, is that, that when, when God finally said wake up <laughs> and I listened is like it was like there wasn't any ground lost I didn't have to go back and start over it was almost like I just put my life on pause and his plan on pause in my life for that period when that obstruction blocked my growth whatever it was I just, I just stopped. I stopped growing. I stopped, I stopped in the purpose that he had for me. When I finally woke up and, and moved to the, started moving back to the light and digging into his word, and it is, it's like that the growth just accelerated and from where it had stopped, not from the beginning. In that sense, we're different than plants because when plants get obstructed to the point they can't get the light, they die. Now, there are cases where we run into darkness and we do stop and death does take place. And that's a whole other sermon. But, <laughs> but, but uh, <coughs> we... Uh, So just like plants, we need the physical light. Praise God for the sun, man. It just now if we just get the warmer temperatures. <laughs> I'm not I'm not too greedy. I just, but uh, but but most important, we need that spiritual light. Yes, amen. And that and that only comes from our Creator and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Worldly things can cast shadows over, over our relationship with Jesus. But if we'll grow towards the light, if we'll press in towards the light, he will, he will just continue to, to feed us, to grow us in this. Okay? The light. The light is Jesus. We can overcome any darkness. There's not a darkness, there's not an issue in our lives that, that we can't overcome when we seek Him and His direction in our lives. When we seek in the light, the light, there's nothing. There's no obstruction. There's absolutely no obstruction. No shadows, no darkness, nothing that can stop us from growing in Him. Because the Word says, where there is light, there is no room for darkness. Which brings up a whole, we could take on a whole other run on that, is, you know, that there... If, we, if we're truly reading Scripture, if, if we are in a light... There's no way that darkness can, the only way darkness can come on us is if we allow it to come on us and we grab hold of it, okay?
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why is that so hard for us? You know? You think about it. Why is that so hard for us? I, another sermon for another day is of doing some studying on, 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 on yeah, what's his name? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. No, no. Uh, wow. Anyway, another day. Another day. <laughs> In the, the, the light. In Proverbs, in Proverbs 16, 15, we read that in the light of the king's face is life and his favor is like a cloud of the latter rain. In the light of of the king's face. Who is the king? Our king Jesus. Jesus is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He is the light of our light, light of this world. We like to we like to give Satan the authority of being the light of this world but he's not the light of this world unfortunately we've allowed him rulership of this world more than we should but again that's a whole nother that's a whole nother story uh jesus is the light if you take nothing out of today's sermon but this i would i would pray that it would be this that when you when you run into, because you will, is when you run into an obstacle that keeps you from feeding, getting fed from the light, the one and true light, that you do just like the plant. You begin to maneuver around to where you can get back to that source. Okay? Because the longer we stay away from the source, the easier it is to fall into that dark place of death. Okay? But, praise God, he is, he is a wonderful, loving God. Amen. He does, he does love everybody. Okay? He is that true love, that true light. He is our all in all. Everything we need, we find in Him. Everything. Jesus was tempted every time every temptation he went to the word he spoke the word he didn't argue with the devil he just spoke truth we could get get example from that when darkness comes up we don't have to argue with it we just have to pray speak the word we have to we have to Trust, speak the word, have faith that the word is true. Okay? Amen? Amen. Well, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for today. <sighs> Boy, what a wonderful day it is. What a perfect day for your light to be shining so brightly as uh, uh, on a day of the sermon you placed in my heart. Oh, thank you, Father, for that. Father, I just pray right now that this, in just, in the, just a short time now, that that you would uh, just begin to speak to your people. 
Father, if there's darkness that has, has tried to cover them and keep them from, from truly receiving and seeking your light, Father, I just pray that you would just touch them now. Father, and just reassure them of your power, your strength, your glory. Minister to them. Move in their hearts today. Each one of us needs a special touch from you today. No matter where we're at in our walk, we need a special touch from you today. So, Father, I just pray for that. Over all in the hearing of my voice, Father, that they would, you would just, just speak to them now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.